Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, our president is presently stuck in traffic, so I will be taking over the meeting for the present time. Uh, welcome, everyone. We appreciate your being here. There are two opportunities to address the board. First opportunity is if you have items that are on the agenda, we'd like to hear those first. And there are cards in the back on either side. If you don't have one and need one, just raise your hand. And the second option will be for anything that is on the agenda or not on the agenda, but we clearly want to hear the agenda items first. So with that, we have the roll call. Secretary Matthias. Okay, Mr. Ross. Here. Ms. Slade. Present. Dr. Feld. Present. Dr. Flores. Present. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody. Dr. Randalls. Present. President Baker. Okay. All set. Okay, we need approval of the agenda. May I have a motion for that? Motion to approve the agenda. Support. Support. Move and support. Have a roll call for that. Okay. Mr. S Mr. Ross. Present. Yes. Ms. Slade. Present. Dr. I'm Feld. sorry. <laughs> yes. I am present. Dr. Feld. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody. Dr. Randalls. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. President Baker. Okay. Thank you. We have celebrations. Okay. I'm sorry. We need a, a motion to a, a, a amend the agenda to delete the probationary teacher non renewal resolution under action items. Can I have such a motion? So moved. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Now it's time for celebrations. Mrs. Slade, I'd like to ask Larry Johnson to come forward to share um, a celebration and uh, that we received a trophy for. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, good evening, uh, Vice President Slate. Good evening. Superintendent Neal and the remaining board members. Uh, just uh, a, a great opportunity, and uh, and, and this be on behalf of uh, of our district. We uh, had the opportunity uh, back in March uh, to participate in a think tank uh, with the uh, with the University of Southern Mississippi. It was the National Center for Spectator Sports uh, Security, uh, Safety and Security, and After School uh, Athletics. And uh, doing that think tank, a lot of the ideals um, and the things that we were doing here in Grand Rapids was was incorporated into a, a document. <clears throat> excuse me, by the University of Southern Mississippi, this document here. Uh, what, what occurred at that at think tank is many of the school districts from around the country selected Grand Rapids as a, a, having a model uh, program for how we run an athletic, uh, after school athletic program, particularly at Hausman Field, and how we were able to secure Hausman Field with our, with our football games. And some of that with the design of the of the facility, the new design of the facility, and adding in things such as uh, money count rooms, things that would keep the facility safe in the event of a, a crisis. Uh, during the last week, uh, I think Tuesday night, uh, we were surprised. Uh, we knew that we had been acknowledged in Orlando, Florida. We were not able to go down to Orlando, Florida. But uh, the representatives from the University of Southern Mississippi came up to Grand Rapids on Tuesday night and awarded us with a, with a nice, uh, a nice uh, trophy. Uh, I think it's in the possession of Kurt Johnson right now. But uh, Kurt Johnson, uh, Christina Johnson, uh, Natasha Neal, and myself uh, participated in the think tank. 
and uh, they just wanted to recognize Grand Rapids for our forward thinking around school safety and security as it relates to our after school programs and the athletic events. And so uh, as a result, we, uh, each of us were, uh, our contributing comments uh, was captured in the, in the document. Uh, that will now be distributed to uh, to high schools around the country uh, as they begin to set their standards for their after school and athletic programs. So. Very good nice. Thank Congratulations. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good to have good news. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Nice. Hey, mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson, you said that um, Larry, who do you say had the, the trophy? Uh, Kurt, Kurt Johnson. Johnson. We, we, ah. we gave it to Kurt Johnson that night with the athletic team, and uh, we haven't seen it since. So. <laughs> <laughs> it will be in the hall. Better, better It'll be in the hallway it somewhere. Better watch for him. Pretty, pretty, nice, pretty nice trophy. It was a wonderful event. Uh, I attended on two days, and I thought that um, we need to give Mr. Johnson a round of applause because he really yeah, put that did. program it was together. A yeah. I, I, I truly enjoyed the, the, the piece from Columbine, uh, uh, Mr. Um, Darrell. I can't remember his name, Scott. Yeah, you, you're talking about the conference. Are we going to yeah. just talk yeah, about talking, that? I'm jumping ahead because, you know, that, that trophy was got me excited about yeah. the yeah, fact that nice. we've nice. done something that I yeah. thought was applicable. So I hope that it gets out in the school paper, Grand Rapids Time, even the Grand Rapids paper. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. So you're going to come back and do that again? He's going to do the talk about the conference. <laughs> okay. We're at the point in the agenda to hear public comment on agenda items. Do we have any cards? Well, there is, uh, there is one that believes it's on the agenda. And it's uh, Glenda Young. Okay. Is Young here? I believe that there's a group that's going to speak from uh, perhaps the uh, Shawnee, or the Grand Rapids Oral Left Parent uh, Organization. Mm -hmm. and I'd like to perhaps comment after they make their presentation. All right, can we wait for that till the end of the meeting? Thank you, sir. All right. Secretary's report. Oh, All right. It's hard to believe that um, back to school um, uh, is going to be happening. The annual back to school celebration is scheduled for Thursday, August 13th at John Ballpark Zoo. And if the weather is inclement, uh, City High Middle School will serve as the alternative location. So mark your calendars for that. There'll be free, free food, giveaways, bounce house, and information on GRPS schools. The event is open at 4 o'clock and runs through 8 p.m. Uh, there is an opportunity to skip lines and register in advance at uh, 2015 back to school dot, uh, even bright dot com. The other is uh, September 8th, uh, the first day of uh, the 2015-16 school year. September 8th is fast approaching, and if you're new to the area, please call Community and Student Services via 819-2150 for information to register your child. Students are also required to wear uniforms at GRPS school. I believe it's K through high school. Uh, information is available online at uh, www.grps.org slash uniforms. Or you can call at 819-2149. And then of course, August 4th is the primary elections. There's a primary election on August 4th. The following candidates are running for mayor, Rosalind Bliss, Reverend Dean, uh, Robert Dean, John George and Willard Lee. So we encourage everyone to please uh, come out and vote. And then also uh, the following candidates are running for the seat of the city commission. John O'Connor for the first ward, Ruth Kelly for re-election for second ward, and David Allen and Brian uh, R. Ba Blakely are running for one third, uh, I'm sorry, for one third vote seat. And then current board of library commissioners, President James Botts, is running for re-election to that board as well. So again, there's a lot of important uh, things that uh, as a community we need to consider. And that's all I have to report. Thank you very much. Superintendent's report. Mrs. Slade and board of, uh, board of Ed members, I'd like to ask Larry Johnson to come down to talk about the conference that was held here in Grand Rapids that we hosted. It's going to be the whole place tonight, huh? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back again, very short, after a brief moment away. Well, uh, this uh, Grand Rapids have truly, uh, I think, uh, it kind of made the 
the circuit as it relates to school safety and security. This past uh, last week, we had the opportunity to host the, uh, the 46th Annual National Association of School Safety and Law Enforcement Officials uh, Conference. It was held at the Amway Grand Hotel, and it, uh, it is the oldest school safety and security organization in the world. It has members all over the country, including uh, Canada, uh, at the Caribbean, as far away as Tokyo, Japan. And, uh, and so it sets the standards and uh, the best practices for what should happen in schools around the world. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to sit as the president of that organization right now. And we, uh, for 10 years, Grand Rapids has tried to get that, that uh, organization to come into Grand Rapids with a, uh, with a conference. And we were competing against uh, communities such as Long Beach, California, LA, uh, Miami, Florida, very destination cities. And, the, the conference uh, or the committee members always ask, well, what's in Grand Rapids? Well, we were able to convince them that there was a lot to do in Grand Rapids, and they came. And at the end of the conference, we, through evaluations and just talking to some of the people that attended, uh, we, we learned that we had probably the best conference in, uh, in 20 years. Uh, had some of the best speakers. We were able to pull in some of the best speakers uh, and uh, set best practices as we move forward. And we had individuals like Michelle Gay, uh, the mother uh, of a young lady who unfortunately was killed in the Sandy Hook incident, uh, and, and Darnell, uh, Darnell Scott, uh, his, his daughter Rachel, was the first victim of Columbine. The theme of that conference was uh, learning from the past to prevent incidents in the future. And so we were able to look at what has happened uh, to school districts around the country. We had representatives at our conference, and this is the first time this happened at any school safety and security conference uh, around the country. But we had representatives from Sandy Hook, Pearl, Mississippi, Paducah, Kentucky, Moses Lake, Washington, Jonesboro, uh, Arkansas, uh, and of course, Columbine. So we had six of the major school shootings uh, communities represented at the conference. Topics such as uh, bullying and cyberbullying and, and new things that are coming out that we want to uh, get our arms around is uh, Periscope, and that's something that parents in, uh, in our community need to be aware of, uh, the, what's groundbreaking and what's coming uh, to our kids. Uh, just a variety of topics on threat assessment, uh, components of safe schools, uh, relationship building. It, it was unlike any other school safety conference because in many of the conferences that I've attended, you hear a lot about uh, rapid deployment and active shooter. Well, there was none of those kind of conversations occurring. Uh, the members of this organization were talking about how to build relationships with kids and that understanding that it is relationships that will be able to prevent incidents in the future. So we are very fortunate uh, uh, to be involved in the conference, very fortunate to have Grand Rapids rep and well represented. Uh, Superintendent uh, Neal was uh, represented and uh, appreciate Pastor Moody who came in, gave the invocation for us. And, uh, and we were just uh, on behalf of the organization to say thank you uh, Grand Rapids for supporting uh, what we thought was a, was a, a very um, valuable cause, uh, and uh, it was it turned out to be a very a very great conference. Uh, they said they want to come back, and uh, we said we don't know about that, but uh, we'll see how it goes because it's a lot of work that goes in behind the national conference. But again, thank you. If you have any questions, we'll try to try to answer the uh, questions for you about the conference. I just want to just comments? push out once again that uh, in talking with um, Dan Savage. Yes. He said he had opportunity to hear all of the speakers. Yes. But he said there was one speaker out of that whole event that he said was the best. And he said his name was Larry Johnson. Oh, very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> so I want to give kudos to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, very Superintendent, nice. he did a great job Good. Uh, to bring that to Grand Rapids and to see the outcome. You had about, what, 200 people in attendance? Uh, it was about uh, about 150 registered guests that, mm -hmm. that showed up and that participate in the actual conference. And one of our, uh, you know, one of our, you know, one of our staff members, uh, Christina Johnson, was elected as the Midwest Region President, a uh, Midwest Region Director, which would represent 11 states and giving advice to 11 states. So Grand Rapids has two that's people great. that now sits on that national board that's giving out advice uh, in terms of uh, school safety from around the country. Awesome. Uh, just want to thank uh, uh, Sam Meekins and Natasha uh, Neal, who volunteered and gave a lot of their time to help us uh, uh, pull this off. But not only that, uh, to to you, the board, for supporting it. Uh, to, uh, through uh, Superintendent Neal and for the city of Grand Rapids for, for really helping us and uh, experience Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm.
Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And, and uh, we'll ask uh, Julie to get your, your shirt sizes because the, uh, the board left a lot of shirts here, and we, uh, we will get them to you. <laughs> but we also have just a, it's a, uh, just a challenge coin. Um, and uh, the front of the coin is the logo, the new logo, new branding of the organization. And uh, then the, uh, the second part, the, the back half of the, of the coin is the, uh, the picture of the uh, in, in stamp of the Calder. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so each community gets to design their own coin, and this is the coin that we designed when they came to Grand Rapids. So, mm -hmm. so we'll leave one with you. Good Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thanks. job. Yeah. Good job. And our president has appeared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, almost two hours from Holland. Really? Oh, you were in that uh, bag. Yes. yes. To take. You guys would have left it. It's so we'll do that at, at the time. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're at action hands. You can take one and pass it down. So thank you, uh, <laughs> Vice President, for taking over for me. Um, Sorry, you were backed up so long. That's been a terrible accident. Oh, there was that. What was? I didn't even know what happened. There was an accident. Okay. Um, We're at action items. Okay. Ooh, action items. Mm -hmm. All right, so our first action item is the uh, purchasing agenda. Mm -hmm. I get a motion. Move to accept the purchasing agenda. Support. Uh, any, any discussion of the purchasing agenda? Dr. Randalls, did you have a question? No, you know, I had asked a question, and my clarification uh, in, it was <coughs> in regard to the agreement regarding the custodial services. And, um, you know, I, math is a funny thing, right? But 28 sites, and I wanted to make sure it was evenly divided throughout those sites, or, you know, was there, was there some different um, contracts granted at higher prices? And so, um, no, they're equally distributed, so that makes sense. Okay, so your question is asked. No problem. Uh, and, and I was reading an interesting article about uh, Lansing and how they were reviewing the transportation costs once they uh, privatized it and comparing that with, with what they were doing prior to that and hiring directly. I'm wondering if we've done any kind of analysis of, of those uh, uh, same relationships or potential relationships in, in our decision making. Specifically in the area of uh, custodial services, having experience in the classroom and knowing the difference or seeing the difference in our buildings uh, when we hired and and um, managed our own custodians, I thought uh, it was certainly superior than the contracting that we have going on right now through privatization. Uh, wondering if we might take a look at that in terms of an an, an analytical approach to comparing. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, costs for services and, and outcomes. Mm -hmm. you want to make Let me answer? address that. Yeah. Um, we, we do know that there is, has been a savings, but what I understand you're asking is not about the dollars, right? Well, it is both, about both the dollars, service. Dollars and services. Okay, so, the, so the, the dollars can can address the service, but the dollars we have had a pretty significant savings. Um, over the years, as well as transportation. So with both of these, um, this happened uh, years ago under Burt Blakey, um, and we have captured dollars that we've invested in the classroom. But the services, I don't know that, but Ken can talk about the service person. Okay, can I but, clarify your yeah, statement, please. please? So you're saying that there exists a study of that? No, I'm saying that we've kept track. There was a time we kept track of the money that we saved by okay. privatizing transportation as well as um, the part of the custodial services okay. that we privatize. So we have had that in the past. Um, we have not done that since I've been the superintendent. Um, Is that information could be shared with us then as to what has been analyzed and what was... You know. How much we've saved over yes. the years? We can sure we can go back to the Thank business you. office to find out how much we've saved. We can easily go back to say to find out what it cost us for transportation and custodian and what it what it is today. The couple things though, um, Jose would be one we have fewer schools, so we would look at that now as opposed to what it was. Um, but like I said, the services I don't have that. But Ken can come down and address address that. So to clarify, there were some services that were privatized back when Superintendent Blakey was mm -hmm. superintendent, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. for a time there was a comparison there was a of the cost saving. savings, mm -hmm. but obviously that hasn't continued. Yeah. No. Yeah, because the board okay. probably four or 
five boards ago yeah. decided to privatize. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, just because I've been in the district, I know that we saved quite a bit. I mean, we were trying to save And these aren't new, but this isn't a new decision. This no, is, no, oh you know, no. That was 10 years old. with, okay. or more than 10 years ago, it was privatized. Those things that were privatized, wasn't it the busing and the janitorial services? Some, so the, Some not all of it, so it's part of it, yes, There's that works. Part. Yeah, mm -hmm. but all the busing. Yes, Plus absolutely. We don't part own any buses. Yeah. All of the busing and part of the janitorial. Janitorial, yes. Mm -hmm. So, so just so I'm clear, you don't even own a bus, right? In the district. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I'd love to get our name up. Well, I, I bring those issues up because there's also um, a a new um, complaint filed in the city of Detroit against emergency managers for. Um, failing to provide adequate services and mm -hmm. for uh, basically upholding separate and unequal right. uh, treatment of their students. That's in right, fact, right. by going to private, privatized buses, in fact, some of the students couldn't even get to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there are some drawbacks and some considerations should be given to uh, analyzing just where we are and where mm -hmm. we've been and what is most co cost effective and what is most uh, appropriate for our urban community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Just to describe what the service is, the, the contract custodial is a supplement to our own employee custodial services. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't an exact where each building gets one or two contract custodial. It, there's a distribution based on need, and all the contract custodial works with our own custodial. They're never in a building alone without one of our custodians there. Making We have our own staff that are responsible. As, as far as the quality, that's always been an ongoing concern, and that's one of the reasons the contract was rebid. The quality was not exactly where we wanted it to be, and one of the reasons the, the firm West Michigan Janitorial is recommended is based on the references, and our supervisors actually went and visited those districts to see what they were doing, how they were trained, and the quality of their work. And that went into the decision. And that, that, again, but that will be monitored ongoing to make sure that we get that level of service. Thank you, Ken. Any other discussion? So I just want to clarify <laughs> that we are voting on, among other purchases, uh, a new service for janitorial we are not privatizing anything that was done right. at least a decade ago mm -hmm. <laughs> and um so um and it, i know it was quite volatile this has been discussed since i've been on the board but it's been a few years um and um so we could revisit that just to kind of re-clarify uh, where we're at and why we're there but um anyway so we're clear on what we're voting on any no further discussion okay mr ross yes Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randles? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you voted earlier to remove the uh, non renewal resolution? We need a motion for it. We did. We did. We, we, moved. Did. we did it. Yeah. We, okay. 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 Probationary. okay. So we have. Okay. So then the next is consent agenda. Correct. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Slade. Yes. Dr. Felb. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randles. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Okay. Set the agenda passed. So. Mm -hmm. Let's do that now. Okay. Um, we actually will have a kind of discussion item. We actually wanted to have a brief uh, comment um, during the superintendent's report, um, but we went on to the action items early in my haste to get moving. So. Um, uh, would you like to? I would. President Baker and members of the board, I would like to ask Laura to come forward to talk about a uh, concern that we have um, 
we have received, and you all probably have mm -hmm. received some as well, about some of the changes. And so I would just like for Laura to, to one, speak to that. But then I want the board to know that we will um, have a full discussion with you so that you're apprised of the, everything that we've done and we are doing. For the audience, Laura's position is? Also. Absolutely. Laura is the executive director of special ed for the district, and she is a member of my cabinet. Thank you for that. Superintendent Neal, President Baker, Board of Education members, thank you. Um, wanted to let you know that we are aware of the receipt of some concerns regarding the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf audiologist position. Um, I'd like to confirm for you and for our public that we are absolutely 100% maintaining a 1.0 audiologist for the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf program. Um, Superintendent Neal has asked for a full report. I will be getting that to her, and as she indicated to you, you will be fully informed, and anything I can do to help you with that further understanding, I'd be happy to be available. And of course, um, I welcome and encourage staff and families at any point in time to contact me directly um, to, to help them in their understanding. Questions? Any comments? Yeah, um, my, my biggest concern mm -hmm. is that how does that information get to the press before we as a board know anything about it? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, some of it has to do with my learning curve this school year because I'm coming up on my first year anniversary and there are nooks and crannies that I am exploring and finding as I go. So my apologies to our community and I will totally own responsibility for those kinds of things occurring. Um, it, we have a very dedicated um, community of families across all of our eligibility areas, disability areas in Grand Rapids. Um, our oral deaf program is no different than that. We have had active and ongoing conversations with our staff, with our leadership, with Kent ISD, who supports and calls us to serve the county in, in this manner, providing the programming for the oral deaf uh, program as Northview Public Schools provides it for the total communication group. and. I think because of these conversations that information went, I think because of um, follow up to our budget conversations here that information went. We had a letter crafted to our parents um, and it went to our communications office, it went for interpretation and all of those things take a little more time than I anticipated our networks getting um, a hold of. And so I will just say I'm smarter on the back end coming around it than I was on the front end getting in front of it um, in terms of holding <clears throat> question and answer forms, thinking and learning, reminding people of what I've learned about our two-year history and journey to this point about the diagnostic center, um, which is really where the impact is. But, Pastor, to answer your question, um, someone sent that information to the press at the same time I think that they sent it to all of you. So I think that's... That, too. I think that's <laughs> I yes, the, question. the question. Dr. Flores and then... Well, I, you know, I was, um, I was certainly impressed with the writing and the testimonial given by uh, Julie Swanson in the letter that we received. And, and I think that, you know... It, administration ought to look at people who have experience, especially mm -hmm. 30 years of experience in the mm -hmm. district and, and servicing students. I think that that, that, uh, that viewpoint is, is, uh, is welcomed, mm -hmm. it should be welcomed, mm -hmm. and should be embraced. Mm -hmm. um, many of the ideas that come forward from, from our staff, you know, who have worked in the field, really ought to be respected. Mm -hmm. And so I would hope that that, that would be the attitude that we, that we take in receiving these communications and whether they make the press or not. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, we live in a transparent world. Absolutely. We need to be responsible and accountable to our, our citizens. That's why they, mm -hmm. they placed us here in office and in administration. So, hey, thank you very much, Julie, and others who will testify here on this. Thank you. Ms. Lee. Yes, I do. Um, how many audiologists will we have left? In Grand Rapids, 1.0. One full-time audiologist. And we have had? 1.8. Okay, so we are 
cutting one position? The yes. One full position or the point eight? The point eight. The point eight position is moving to a 1.0 position. It's been offered to her as a 1.0. She's current in the district and experienced with students. I think it's important to note that, and I was a special ed administrator in the district for a long time and have worked closely with the oral deaf program, um, that this program has gone leaps and bounds uh, over the years. We used to have a lot of classrooms. Kids were in classrooms, you know, K through 12. Now they're in general education, and a lot of that is due to consultant and audiology services. And so I think it's very clear that we've, we've made tremendous gains in that area with cochlear implants and, and everything else. So um, I, just, I just hope that we're really considering the, the real savings. We, we used to have classrooms with teachers and aides and all kinds of things, and those things are gone. So whatever we can do to keep these kids in the regular classrooms with the correct equipment, up to date, and that it's all in good service. That's really what we need to do because this is this program has made tremendous uh, balance. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are there any other comments? Thanks for mm -hmm. uh, coming. I know that you're gonna we're gonna end up hearing a more full report, mm -hmm. but I think it's really important. I think that one of the things that I think is important about what you had to say is the dedicated community and staff, mm -hmm. and that's why we hear about uh, issues that af that affect them. And I wanted to make sure that they knew that we're um, listening and trying Absolutely. to understand where things are at. And I appreciate your work. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to hear. All right. Um, no other discussion items. Um, public comment. Are there any public comment cards? There is. Uh, we have three. And Glendy Young is first. Is it the um, Grand Rapids Oral Deaf Group going to address the board? Um, there's two other cards here. Uh, Sarah? Sarah? Oh, we have some others. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you please bring them and hand them the. You can. If you, yeah, if you have these, you can. Yeah. Just hand them there. behind you. <laughs> there you go. Did you complete a card? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. You were Sarah Ivy? Oh, okay, Sarah. Okay. Superintendent and members of the Grand Rapids Board of Education, my name is Sarah Felposh, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the children who have, are currently attending or will be attending the nationally recognized and highly claimed Grand Rapids Oral Deaf program regarding the proposed staffing changes to the oral deaf audiologist position. We have dedicated teachers and staff that help our children learn to communicate in this world and to succeed in school. The Grand Rapids Oral Deaf program should be a point of pride for the Grand Rapids Public School and the entire Kent Intermediate School District. Educational programs and experts from other states have come to observe and learn from the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf staff and program in order to model their own program after our model. Our staff has been asked to travel to other school districts throughout the state and country to present workshops and train staff regarding auditory verbal philosophy that our oral deaf program exemplifies. Having a full-time, well-trained educational audiologist on staff and on site is critical to all students and to the program's continued success. The district has stated that children will continue to receive audiology services even as a position is absorbed into the role of an existing Ken O'Shea audiologist and our teacher consultants. That may be true, our children will continue to receive services, however, it's what they won't receive that concerns us the most. When a child without sound, having an on-site dedicated audiologist means their hearing can be restored within minutes, rather than potentially days if having to wait to work with outside agencies. Children with hearing aids and cochlear implants rely on FM systems both at the Ken O'Shea campus and in the schools they attend once they're mainstreamed <laughs> into general education. These systems are essential for them to have educational content directly delivered to their hearing devices, ensuring that children can receive the curriculum as their peers do. The Royal Deaf Educational Audiologist has expertise in FM systems, which is crucial to our students' success. The on-site audiologist has the ability to program children's <coughs> cochlear implants and their digital hearing aids. Many of the children who attend the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf program are infants and toddlers. Again, it takes expertise 
and time, often multiple months of audiology visits to obtain accurate audiogram and hearing tests. And the consistency with the same audiologist is key. The audiogram becomes the key that helps each child make the most wonderful hearing aid and cochlear implant technology available. Without that expertise, the technology is just technology, but with the expertise, it becomes a way for a child to hear and listen to the specific ranges and sounds of spoken language. <coughs> Auditory learning is the foundation of the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf Program. Quality auditory oral program includes initial and ongoing audiological evaluations, provisions for appropriate school amplification, technical assistance and collaboration among clinics, school personnel, students and parents, monitoring of amplification, and periodic analysis of electroacoustics, provision of backup service and parts, access to, uh, sorry, access to assistive devices, repairs of equipment, and cochlear implant mapping and analysis. An auditory verbal approach needs to be fully supported in order to be effective for its participants. You have about a minute. Our parents were issued, assured at the end of May that the audiologist position from a previous retiree would be posted and any eligible candidates were encouraged to apply. However, it became known this summer that the position was eliminated and would be absorbed by a current part-time GRPS employee. We have read the article in the M Live on MLive that this has been considered for two years in conjunction with Kent ISD. If this has been considered for two years, why is it that no staff have been trained in the use of the equipment repair programming? Why wasn't there a tr transition plan in place and communicated to families? If there truly was a plan, then measures should and would have been implemented the last two years to address this consolidation of audiologists. We ask that you strongly and urgently consider keeping a dedicated full-time educational audiologist to support the oral deaf program and provide detailed and timely updates to our families and staff regarding this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have we actually have several, um, and I did not get a chance to say before our first uh, uh, guest that we do need to keep the comments to three minutes. So, um. Heidi Bolt. You can go ahead and reintroduce yourself. So. My name is Heidi Bott. Um, First of all, I want to thank you. Um, two years ago, many of us brought concerns um, to you guys about the changes that were being made then. And it was very encouraging for us to know that you were listening and you did implement some of the things that um, we had been concerned about. So I just want to thank you for that. Uh, my concern is for students who receive services from the oral deaf program <clears throat> who are mainstreamed. Uh, my son is now mainstreamed. Um, from the letter that I read, it sounds as if um, teacher consultants will be working on some of the, M the FM systems when they are not working correctly. Um, this takes time away from the student um, that they are to, they're in the school to spend time with. And it also becomes a problem when students who use the FM system no longer have teacher consultant uh, services. Uh, then we do have to seek outside help if necessary, which can take a significant amount of time, and that is time that our children cannot hear in the classroom. Um, the, oral deaf, the oral deaf program um, is a Kent County program um, that I think we all can be very proud of. As you were saying, there are, it is an incredible program, and it has done it's amazing things for my family alone, and I know that, um, I know the stories of many who feel the same way. Um, Many districts contribute to the program, and we want to make sure that uh, the integrity of the of this award-winning program is maintained. Um, this I know every year of families who move to Kent County so that their children can be a part of this, and we would like to make sure that not just for our children, but for the other children who are going to be a part of this program, that it is that it continues to be a top-notch program. Um, 
We need an audiologist who's experienced in cochlear implants, FM systems, and other form of hearing aids for the benefit not only of the students here in the district, but for all of them in Ken County who use these services. Thank you. And Andrew? Yeah, please give us your full name since. My name is Andrew Erwin. And I have uh, two um, children that are in the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf program. Um, so the one that today, you know, we heard that the Grand Rapids Public Schools has a lot to be proud of. Earlier we heard about the athletic programs. We heard about the school safety. Um, but with the Grand Rapids Oral Deaf program is something that we also need to be really proud of. And, um, the two points that I'd like to kind of address is that technology, which is the cochlear implants and the hearing aids, are great. But without an audiologist to actually help tune those, um, it's just technology. It's just, it could be a brick. It, it doesn't work unless you have somebody with the expertise to actually administer it. Um, and then the duties of the uh, um, current retired audiologist um, are being absorbed by the other teacher consultants. and. My concern is if the technology fails, um, such as the FM system, which you've heard about before, um, then my child is without services. They're without an education. They've got the equal education that everybody else has, but they're separated by sound. Um, and that's something that I'm very concerned about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Julie Weismack. Hi, um, it's Julie Weisman, and Sorry. thank you for, that's okay, um, without an E. <laughs> uh, thank you for um, okay. having us, and thank you for hearing our concerns. Um, my husband and I are here tonight representing everybody from Grand Rapids Oral Deaf that couldn't be here as well as our daughter. We have a 13-year-old daughter that was diagnosed um, at birth with profound hearing loss, and she um, is a, a recipient of cochlear implant, but if I can let you know that one of the things, one of the services that isn't written into any curriculum out there is something that the, the um, retiring audiologist had provided. A year after she received her cochlear implant, she started Shawnee Park at two and a half and was supposed to hear, and her cochlear implant malfunctioned, which is very rare for cochlear implants to happen. Um, without that audiologist that knew a single thing about cochlear implants, we would not have, we were parents that were still learning the system ourselves. And he was one that did every kind of testing as my daughter was not putting her cochlear implant on and not hearing and in a classroom of people that were talking to her. Um, and he immediately got involved with the people that he needed to. He knew how to get in touch with somebody from the actual um, hospital as well as the organizations. He knew exactly what he had to do on the outside. He didn't know what to do on the inside. So I bring that to you because he was a very dedicated person. He was dedicated on the weekends. Unfortunately, my daughter had multiple malfunctions, which is, once again, I say very rare. Yeah. And he was the one that we could contact on the weekend. And I know that's not something that's written in anybody's plan, and I know that's not something I'm proposing either. But what I'm saying is, is that this was a person that really could provide that. You can't teach that. That's something that he learned over many years. Cochlear implant, um, obviously technology, is still new and growing, but it's something that he, and you can't just teach it right away. Um, the other thing that my daughter is 13, she is a success that has been mainstreamed and does use the other technology as well, and it breaks quite a bit. And the people in the general ed situation, they're not trained for that. And if a teacher consultant might be able to maneuver something with that, but for the most part, not. So we do need somebody that is going to take up that position, that is going to understand that it's not just seeing if they can hear for today, but knowing that things will happen in the school situation throughout um, that nobody foresees. So I thank you for hearing us all today, and um, we hope we hope we see some changes. Thank you. Thank you. And Glenda Young. Thank you. 
you, President O'Neill and the board members for allowing this uh, commentary. My remarks are <clears throat> a little more extemporaneous than those that have preceded me, who have came with uh, good written, complete information. However, uh, I'm the father of three children. At all, I've attended the auto oral death program. Starting at three and a half, two and a half, and 18 months years old. Also married to a wonderful pair of pro that's involved in the oral death program and has been for 18 years. All of the things that have been said before me are absolutely true and valid. So my main point would be, I do not think this position should, should be reduced. I think it should be, in fact, properly increased. The technology is, is tremendous, but there are certain children whose parents are not in a position to make sure that their child gets to school with functioning equipment, or that the equipment is functioning and used properly when they get home. And the audiologist plays a big part in that. Uh, all of my kids got mainstreamed. Uh, they're doing very well today. We had two with cochlear implants uh, on one side and, and hearing aids on the other, and the other one had bilateral hearing aids. All of my kids also had a visual component to their syndrome, a visual deficiency. So the oral deaf program versus the total uh, communication program, or, or ASL, uh, would not have helped them at all. In fact, their speech was ranked higher than many other kids with the same type of uh, audiogram uh, defined loss. And uh, this is one of a handful of oral left programs in the, in the country. And I think we should do nothing to uh, reduce the services that we provide. And as learning at these early ages is so critical. So I'd ask you to seriously consider not reducing. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? That's it. Okay. Um, superintendent's comments. I would like to, President uh, Baker and members of the board, I really would like to thank the parents for coming. I think that it is extremely important um, that we hear from you. I do believe, um, as I've said for the past four years, I do believe in listening to the community and um, I'm not one to just say things that, that I'm not willing to do. I will take everything into consideration that you've shared. I will also look closely at the program. Um, it was never uh, the intent to reduce the services for children. And I understand, I agree, there are certain things that um, technology just can't do. And so I hear you. I hear the human side of you as, as parents. Um, so I want you to know that you have my word, that I am listening to you. Um, I am not committing that I would ask the board to keep the position, um, but I am saying that I hear you. I will look at it, and I will take into consideration that human side instead of just looking at numbers. So I want to commit that to you. And I thank you for coming because I think it's important. All right, um, board member comments. I think I'd like to start with uh, Dr. Flores and work this way. You all right? <laughs> yeah. Always. Again, um, you know, in reading uh, some of the minutes from the from the academic achievement committee, I I am concerned about you know the, the vast number of, of Hispanic and ELL learners that we have. Uh, Hispanic are in, fa are in fact impacted by ESL, um, bilingual education. Is, uh, is something I think that too over the years has been streamlined and cut back and we wound up with a, a pretty much a watered down ESL program where we're barely meeting the needs, the basic needs of our children. And I think we ought to look at doing something a little bit more profound. Um, speaking from experience, I think our, our children are lacking content area instruction in a language that they understand. That in math, 
than in social studies and than in science, that they are failing because of the lack of understanding of the primary language of English, and that we need to be about remedying that so that we can uh, experience some greater gains in this district. And so I would encourage my fellow board members to look at this, um, to advocate for equality of services for children who do not speak English as their first language. And um, I think it's something that we're going to hear from community soon about because I know that uh, people are not going to continue to accept the level of, of attainment, educational attainment that we have for a certain group of, of uh, people in this uh, district. And those are basically Hispanic students that, that uh, we need to address more firmly. Thank you very much. Ms. Legrand. No comments. Pastor Moody. No comment. Dr. Randles. Well, usually I am no comment, but I did want to um, congratulate uh, um, uh, Larry Johnson, Mr. Johnson, regarding the program and the award is very important. And thank you to the parents for coming out because it does take a lot of courage to come out and, and speak to uh, people um, and get out and vote tomorrow. Ms. Lee. Yes, I want to thank you, all of you, for listening, and thank you very much for the parents and children who are here today. I certainly agree with you, having had a long experience with it, and uh, be, be sure that we will discuss it clearly. Yeah, I, I think I think we understand that a lot of the decisions that are made have um, a lot of ramifications, and certainly uh, to human lives. And that's that's something that I think, for myself as a board member, and I know for my fellow board members, that's really important for us and to, to our superintendent as well, uh, our students and, and staff. And so uh, we need to hear the issues and we need to continue to build a much and continue to build a much stronger uh, district. So thank you. Dr. Paul? Yes, I, I, I also want to thank the parents for coming out and engaging. I want to um, especially thank you for advocating for those students whose parents can't be here or perhaps don't that's have right. the skill set to advocate or maybe have the ability to do the 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 extra interventions that might be necessary. So I appreciate that. It's very important that you stay engaged with the mm -hmm. system and, and speak to things. Um, I also want to talk about the Academic Achievement Committee. Um, I, I just want to applaud the team again on a really substantial plan for the literacy continuum. I, I was very impressed with it. It stayed with me. I'm excited about it. I think it's reflected some of the best practices in this district with a, um, a real systemic attempt to bring it to the whole system. So I really want to applaud the team for that. And also, the graduation here, I really wish I could have come. Yes. It was, um, I've been on this board for six years, and I was so pleased to see the changes and the successes in our alternative education program and it looked like a wonderful graduation and I'm really really heartened to see this dedication by some of those students that have slipped through the cracks in the past so thank you oh and get out to vote tomorrow please <laughs> get out to vote thank you Russ no comment um, thank you I do want to also thank those that spoke tonight um, and so, Ms. Bott, you referred to when you were here a couple years ago, and, uh, and I think that uh, hopefully you felt then. I appreciated you letting us know that we were responsive then, and I think that you'll, that we respond, and I think it's really important. And, um, and again, I'm always impressed when there are issues, how much we as a board and superintendent learn from um, the public comment that, mm -hmm. that we get. So I really appreciate that tonight. And again, I apologize for for my lateness, but um, we'll see you all next time. Thanks. Thank you. And